The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, commemorates its 43rd year anniversary today, and here's a look at the association's past, as well as expectations and aspirations for its future. The place, Saran Rom Palace, the seat of Thai Foreign Ministry in Bangkok, the date, August 8, 1967. Foreign Minister Adam Malik of Indonesia, Tan Abdul Razak of Malaysia, Masiso Ramos of the Philippines, S. Raja Ratnam of Singapore and Tanat Korman of Thailand inked the Bangkok Declaration, a document aimed at binding the nations of Southeast Asia together through their common interests and promoting peace and stability in the region. Most importantly, it gave birth to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. This spirit of friendship and fraternity was in fact forged at a time when the world was in state of flux and tension constantly prevailed in Southeast Asia. The five ASEAN countries then were all coping with impacts from the Cold War, as well as some of the country's decolonization and nation-building processes, all of which triggered armed confrontation in places like Borneo and Indochina, to name a few. Through this context, the formation of ASEAN can thus be seen not a mere diplomatic formality, but rather an undertaking by Southeast Asian countries to assert their independence on the world stage and reveal a shared intent amidst the climate of anxiety that these countries wanted to attain their destiny together. ASEAN gradually come to its own after the end of the Cold War as countries seek to turn past battlefields into marketplaces and replacing past animosities with the spirits of cooperation in the area of economic, security and socio-cultural issues. By April of 1999, all 10 Southeast Asian nations become part of the association. And throughout the new millennium, ASEAN members, old and new, work very hard to move closer to a European Union-style community, most noticeably with the ratification of the ASEAN Charter by 2008, which helped form a legal infrastructure to further strengthen all areas of regional cooperation. In recent years, ASEAN countries also reach out to their partners around the world and see the enhancing of inter-regional connectivity as one of the key strategies in forging a single ASEAN community, targeted for the year 2015. The most important is to achieve the, uh, what we call the ASEAN connectivity, which is uh, very close to, to our heart, uh, because we, uh, Thailand, we have initiated that uh, when we were chairman of ASEAN. And people, uh, not only within ASEAN, but uh, outside of ASEAN, realize that this is a very important uh, strategy where you have to, to move uh, in order to achieve uh, our ASEAN community as we plan for the 2015. Uh, when I'm, I'm speaking of connectivity, I don't uh, mean only uh, physical connectivity, but also uh, people connectivity, economic connectivity, which will, will serve as a basis uh, for, for the ASEAN connectivity and to, to push ASEAN forward in that direction of being a, a community. Dr. Iti Ditbanjong, the Director General of the Department of ASEAN Affairs at the Thai Foreign Ministry, reviews that as ASEAN step into its 44th year of existence, the forging of linkages between ASEAN and its international partners will gain further boost with the more active involvement of the United States and Russia. These new linkages will be beneficial in terms of expanding ASEAN economic and political interests abroad, but at the same time, ASEAN also risks at becoming less relevant through the increased involvement of global superpowers, and Dr. Iti points out that this is something that all ASEAN countries should be mindful about. Uh, we have to have the strength from within. This is the wording that we use right now, that the strength have to come from within. And the strength I'm talking about is the community building process. As long as we can uh, achieve uh, this community uh, building within the, the time framework, uh, we, we, we am sure that uh, we would uh, be able to uh, safeguard our centrality. The global connections between ASEAN with China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia and New Zealand, as well as Russia and the United States in the near future, are a testimony to how far ASEAN has emerged from the shadow of its past. 43 years on, and looking at the target of 2015, 
The goal for the association now is to increase participation of its people in all aspects of regional cooperation so that the association can truly become an organization for and by its own people. In this respect, this next five years will certainly be a challenging and exciting time for Southeast Asia. I'm Panuk Wong Chiwum of Thai News Agency, reporting for RCN TV.